All right. Well, I'm going to start this off by going over uh, question number 1B. Uh, what is my greatest weakness? Pretty much it's just my ability to trust other people. I've had a lot of bad groups, and uh, whether it's what they do and what they say, I'm not necessarily certain that they'll actually like finish what they say they will when they will, or that the quality will be what is expected of them. And really going into my final semester, my senior year, I have a bunch of groups. And knowing that ahead of time, I really wanted to just relax a little bit and try to give all of my groups uh, the respect that they really deserve, because I really wasn't doing that before. And uh, it kind of came out later in the semester a bit, too, that we had a meeting about it. Um, but yeah, I just kind of fell back into that pattern with like just the pressure from the coronavirus and work and everything and work just wasn't happening when one of our deadlines to meet extra credit was coming up and I started to feel like people were not doing the work and then there was a miscommunication and things got out of hand but ultimately I feel like I can learn a lot from that in that I just need to be able to relax and understand what's going on because once we were able to talk it through, and Ryan and I, after our meeting, went through everything, and it was all a lot better, and there was actually no issues, it was a, a lot better, and I just hope to maintain more of a cool head and just believe in people more going forward. Um, as for question two, the survey was definitely what I'm most proud of going through and had the best experience with. Um, making so many drafts of just like what the proper questions are to be asked and like how many questions we asked were poor. Like our first draft, uh, I can't believe we asked some of the questions we asked on that thing. They were, they were really subpar and not what we needed them to be uh, to get the information that is necessary for our research. Um, so that helped us a lot with adapting and trying to think like other people instead of just doing what we know and that's where we would on our first results fell into a lot of the problems that we weren't experiencing on some of our laters um yeah it was just a lot of like other people's point of view and how they're reading a question versus how i'm reading a question so this whole, as a whole just kind of helped me because I needed to rely on my other group members because the way I phrase a question a lot of the time isn't the way they would and you can get two different answers that way and we just need to be very clear and concise in how we phrase our questions. Um, and then we had reoriented towards online and we had to start all over. So in the end, we ended up writing like four or five different entirely new surveys. And the questions that we ended up with were nothing like what we started with. And that was just a great experience in trying to like get through a process that I'm very unfamiliar with and could have, to be honest, struggled with. Um, so... The thing I would take away from the class the most is just that, that adapting and thinking in a new manner from just doing this survey so many times. Um, yeah, but basically as far as the project goes, uh, we found out that the Boys and Girls Club of America was very well known, like just a little bit behind YMCA, but it was number two overall. So I'm not too sure that there's any issues with awareness. It could go up. It was only like at 60%, but the top was only at like 65%. So there's not much of a da difference there. Um, specifically looking at the Boys and Girls Club for Simi Valley, who we started to help. I'm not sure exactly we got much other than uh, what preferences parents would like and maybe programs to really benefit them. Because what I think we found out was that a lot of people were just put off, like uh, like 8% uh, did not like the location of the Boys and Girls Club versus the 31% that just liked the Boys and Girls Club. So that's like 25% of your base of your enrollment could be uh, uh, encompassed if you were able to just have a better location, but I don't know how realistic that is for Simi Valley to move, or maybe uh, there'd be some cannibalism if another one was to open up. So 
Again, I'm not really too sure how to help Boys and Girls Club Simi Valley other than if we were to extend our research and try to gather more. Uh, thanks, Professor.